Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we honor you, sir. We have ears to hear. We open our hearts, we open our minds for revelation from heaven, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Join me again today in welcoming my darling daughter, Kelly, mm -hmm. to this broadcast. Sweetheart, you. oh, you look so pretty today. Thank you. Amen. Kelly, let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. This will be very familiar to you. Yes. <laughs> my Bible's so... Uh... Oh, I'm, I'm, like yours is. <laughs> I'm telling you, when the kids were little, uh, now I'd, I'd, I'd tell Kelly, I'd say, Kelly, we're going to have, come here, come here. Oh, she'd start in, I'm telling you. She'd start pleading her case to me before I ever, before I ever really said anything. And I, she, oh, Daddy, now don't do not, hey, don't do something you're going to regret later, Daddy. Now you know, no, 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 no. And she'd start in with me. And after a while, I'd get tickled, and I couldn't dare show that I was tickled. Now, John was absolutely the opposite. Mr. Stoic. <laughs> now, I don't care what you did. You might get a nod one way or the other, but I don't care if you spanked him. Wouldn't say a word. And it, it took me a while to, <laughs> to realize that he was listening. More than I, and I'm, I'm, hey, I'm talking about 40 years ago. And I'm, I'm having to learn these things. See, my, my parents didn't know these kind of things. This is discipline, not punishment. That's right. I like to say it's for them, not you. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's this, not because they broke something precious to don't you. Don't you ever ever, don't ever, don't, never, ever, ever, never, 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 ever, 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 don't ever, 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 ever. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'm saying to you, don't ever discipline your child angry. That's right. Don't you do it. I mean it. I don't care <laughs> if it just flew all over you. The scripture says, be angry, but sin not. And you jerk that child up and give them a whap on the backside and you're mad, you just sinned. You're the one that needs to repent. That, that screaming out at that child, you're the one that needs to repent. This is not about punishment. It's not child abuse either. That is. That is. That is. That's child abuse. Now, to correct a child as according to the Word, the Word doesn't say strap. It doesn't say uh, in, in, to spare the rod, it doesn't say uh, to spare the rod uh, spoils a child. No, no, that's not what the scripture said. He that spares the rod hates Hateth. his child. The strong Whoa, language. <laughs> that's, yeah, and it's stronger in the Hebrew than it is in English. Mm -hmm. And it's not beating, it's not punishment, it's discipline, it's correction, and if done correctly, and the Lord will teach you how to do that, it makes a bond so strong between you and your children. They will learn to trust you and learn to come to you. And, and instead of being like I was and just, just, I don't want them to even know where I am. And that spirit of rebellion took me over when I was just a young boy. And they did, Kelly, they didn't understand. They, they would have done better and told me later. They, if they had known better, they wouldn't have done it that way. Well, we all everybody, are that way. Everybody's mm -hmm. been like that. But we have learned and we do know these things. And you don't have to go through all of that, that whole learning curve back there. You, we've got the information for you now. We're here for you to, to help you develop it. There's more still for you to learn. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Mother said a wonderful thing to me, Daddy. I was uh, about to go teach some people about raising your children. And I said, I'm going to see what Mother says about it. I said, Mother, what would you tell parents today? And I had kids of my own at that time. She said, I would say, do everything you know to do and believe God to make up the rest. Make up the difference. Amen. I thought that was yeah. one of the wisest don't thing do I've ever... anything until you hear it. That's right. And this is where I was because I saw if I did what the way my parents did, 
I'm going to make the same mess that they made, and I, I don't want to do that. And I had already learned, I'd already heard from God about uh, letting the Word do its work. So I would bring, I'd bring them in, <clears throat> and I'd say, okay, now let me read this scripture to you here because i got something I need, I need to talk to you about. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is uh, Ephesians 6, 1. For this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Now this is quoting uh, Genesis and quoting the teachings of the Old Covenant, but this is New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I'd, and I'd say, now, Kelly, I'm responsible for this. Now, I need to see to it that it's well with you, that you don't live sick, mm -hmm. and that, that you, don't, you don't live in the curse of the law because we've been redeemed from the curse. And we had taught you kids that from the time you was able to even hear and understand. I, I, I preached about David and Goliath when John was four. I brought him in and set him down on the hearth of the fireplace over there on Florentine, that little white, little white fireplace we had in there. Set him down there and I preached for nearly an hour on, on David and Goliath. The Lord said, don't boil it down to their level. You just bring it down where they can argue with you. Preach. Let the Word do its work. Mm -hmm. Men are one by the foolishness of preaching. I preach and John's eyes got about that big of David, the champion, and oh man, he got that big head in his hand. He's slinging around saying, I got him, I got him, I got him. And John was like this. And he, I got through and John said, whoo, daddy, that was a long one. And, and I said, John, you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart. He said, okay. I said, would you like to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so we prayed. Well, the same thing was true with you. That's the way they came up. But now here's what I tell them. Now, I need to be responsible for this, that you live long and be well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you now the truth about what to do and what not to do. Now, you know better than to do what you did. Yes, sir. I knew better than that. Now then, if you, re if you come to me without me having to come to you and, you, and you repent and say, Daddy, I did something I need to tell you about. I need to repent before you. See, that's what the Word tells us to do in 1 John. If we come to Jesus and confess it before Him, He's faithful and just, and not only forgive us, but cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And He won't ever bring it up again because it has been wiped from His memory. Isaiah 43, 25. And I'd say, now, we need to talk about this. If you come to me and you repent, then it's wiped out. I'll never bring it up again. It's over. And I'd read 1 John chapter 1 and we'd read that. You understand what I'm telling you? Uh -huh. And so we'd go through that. But now, if you refuse to repent and you keep doing that, you know better than to tell me something not true. You know better than to do that. You know better than to use language that comes out of the curse instead of the blessing. You know better than to do that. I don't have to come tell you that that's wrong. You know better than to do that. Yeah. Well, if you come to me and repent, just bring it to me. We'll pray about it. And we'll get this out. But if I have to intervene and stop you. And get you to repent. Yeah. And that's why we're here today. Yeah. I am intervening in this action that you have not repented of on your own. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about it. 
And <laughs> it was amazing to me that we could do that. And most of the time, I, I didn't, it had been very few times that I, that I had to spank them over anything like that. We could talk about it. And I'd tell them, now, this, we, we can't go on with this. Now, if you continue this, if I have to intervene with this again, then we're going to have to deal with it. But we're going to pray about this now. And we'd pray about it, and I would lead them in repentance. And it was amazing to me what a huge effect it had. We, we were at the supper table one day. She was just a little old girl. And we're sitting there, and she said, uh, I need to repent. I said, for what? She said, I called you an ugly name. I said, you did? Well, not really. I just thought about it. <laughs> I said, okay. And we prayed about it. And she, she I said, that, that's the end of that right there. Okay. All right, daddy. Amen. But now see what's happening. I'm, I'm not her enemy. But if I'm her punisher, then I'm her enemy. And what she's going to have to do is be able to do this without me finding out about it or she's going to get the, the, the way whipped out of her. Well, no, 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 no. You don't need to be making enemies in this household. The enemy is not flesh and blood. The enemy is principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in heavenly places. And they need to learn that. You need to learn that and learn and teach and train never out of anger and never out of fear. And never by yourself. You've got a partner. Yes, you do. You know, people today, Daddy, honestly, me with Emily and, and raising her is very different even than Max because there was just a lot more freedom in society to, t you know, <laughs> where you're out and somebody smarts off or something that needs discipline, you know, you could just discipline them. But now, you know, people don't not only understand God's Word, they are against God's Word, and they're against you doing it the way God's Word says. Yeah. And um, so you have to, you know, you have to use wisdom. You, you have to hear from the Lord on when and how and what. But at the same time, you have to base your, all your actions on God's Word. If you base your actions on God's Word, you'll never discipline them out of love because God's Word says love is primary. Um, but you will right, commit that. to his way. You'll never, you'll never discipline. You will discipline out of love, but right. you don't discipline outside, without love. Or outside, outside of outside love. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you for I clarifying you that. You, you won't discipline outside of his love. And even if you're doing it really according to God's word, you won't do it thinking that this is the thing that makes the difference because your obedience to discipline your children opens the door for God to move in their heart. And if God's not doing something in their heart, you might as well forget it anyway. Yeah. The, so the this Holy is Spirit, really what we're after is the Lord and the Holy Spirit being able to partner with you. He's not only then your partner in this, but remember, he, he's the, the great that does teacher. The work. He's the great teacher. Jesus said, it's the Father that dwells within me. He does the work. So all I'm doing is making an avenue or what Jesus said, suffer the little children. That doesn't mean put up with them. It means that word is an intensive form of send. Propel, propel your children to the word. See to it. See to it. Send them to God's word. And so you can't do that without being in the word and without doing it based on his word. But at the same time, when you're that way, you've got a partner and it might look impossible for your children to understand what you're trying to get across to them. But it's not your job to bring the understanding. It's his job and he will do his job and you do your part. One of the worst things. Oh, God forgive us for any, any of us forever fallen into this yes. demon trap. Oh, my, 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 my. This is my house, boy, and we live under my rules in this house. 
And if you can't live in my, my house and follow the rules of this house, then you're just going to have to get out of this house. That's the dumbest thing you can do. He'll get up and leave your house and you don't have any, you don't have any, any influence again. And he'll also think that's God's way. Whatever you do is what they're going to think God is yeah. like. Yeah. God doesn't want you unless you're perfect. I had um, very, very outstanding elder of mine in the Word. And, uh, and I, I questioned him uh, about this one day. At the time, John was about, uh, he was about 13, 12, 13, 14. And he said, Kenneth, find out what your children want to do and then go do it with them and help them get it done. I thought, yeah, oh yeah, I see that. Go find out what it is and go do it with them. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have the money to spend on that, Brother Coburn. Well, so what? God does, and God's more interested in the children than he, in, in, in ministering to the children than he, than he is interested in you ministering to your congregation, your elder congregation. The kids come first. God said so. Now, I studied after the life of, of uh, E.W. Kenyon and and not only studied him, but I very early in this ministry, first year, I mean, just the, the, the last half of 1967. And uh, somebody handed me 13 of his books. And I began to read them. And, I, and they were so powerful, I, co I couldn't read over about a paragraph at a time. And I would read these things and, oh, then I began to read about him. And Kelly, he was back there then. He had little, and I'm talking about mimeographed again because this is all anybody had. They, there were no copiers. Well, <laughs> no, there were no copiers, and churches didn't have printing presses. They didn't know they even could believe God for things like that. And so he was mimeographing off little... Uh, folded sheets, same size as this piece of paper because they would go in a little three-wing binder like this. And it, it had a front and a back and a front and a back. Now, what he had done, the Lord told him, he said, the reason you're struggling in your congregation is because you're not teaching them all. You're teaching from the pulpit but your children are not getting what you're teaching in the pulpit. He said, what should I do? He said, teach your teachers first and then have them teach the children the same thing you're teaching in the pulpit. Don't water it down. Teach them the same thing. So Kelly, he started doing that. And within a very short amount of time, the church, the whole thing, had no sickness nor disease in it because he didn't have to reteach the children when they got to be 12 and then again when they were 18 and then again when they were 25. No, no. He started teaching them when they were little babies, little children. The teachers would, would read these same things to the little babies and little children. You're redeemed from the curse of the law. You are the blessing of Abraham. All you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. And they came up then and, and as toddlers hearing these same things. The teachers were teaching the toddlers the same thing he was teaching out front. And he made these lessons. And then he got on the radio and taught these same things. These were his radio outlines. Well, they became my preaching outlines back there in, in the olden days. Yeah. And I began to teach the kids from these exact same things. The Word is the Word. And it will work on you. But the, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven belongs to the kids. It's already in there. All you have to do is teach it. 
The, yeah. the desire to do what pleases God is in a child with no argument. I mean, one time Max was having trouble at school. He was seven years old and I'd been teaching him these things and teaching him to, re to honor the word. So anyway, he comes in and he's not keeping his hands and his feet to himself. And he's banging his lunchbox along the wall as he walks to class, right? Because Max is a real touchy, want to get in right with you and hug you or whatever, but he had a hard time with that. And I took him to the scripture that talked about working with your hands, that which is good. And it talks about walking in love. And I just pointed, I said, read that. And he, we read it together. I said, is there any way that you can make your actions fit with this verse? He's seven years old, about 20 seconds of thought, this big tear runs down his eyes and goes, no, ma'am. He got discipline. He was on his way out of that temptation after that. But it, you took him to the Word. Took him to the Word, and you had something to build on. Gave him a Then core. every time he comes through the room, grab him and hug him and quote that verse. Every time you get up close to him, grab him, kiss him on top of the head. Oh, Daddy, don't all me. I love you, boy. Grab him <laughs> up here again and just hug him every time he comes through the house and quote that verse of Scripture.